So this is just a basic, very beginner's class on what a candlestick is. And um, I'm just gonna roll through uh, this quick little um, slide show basically that I made and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So everybody, thank you for coming. This is the Bull House Discord, obviously. Um, my name is First Strike Vet. My personal name is Tyson. Um, we're glad you guys are here. Um, this isn't just about us, it's about the whole community. So, um, here we go. So, what is a candlestick? A candlestick is a type of price chart used in technical analysis that displays the high, low, open, and closing prices of a security for a specific period. It originated from J Japanese uh, rice merchants and traders to track market prices and daily momentum hundreds of years before becoming popular, popularized in the United States. The white part of the candlestick is called the real body and tells investors whether the closing price was higher or lower than the opening price. Black if the stock closed lower, sorry, red if the stock closed lower, and green if the stock closed higher. Um, so what a candlestick looks like, I'm sure a lot of you already know. So this is a Japanese candlestick. Uh, this is a bullish one. So open um, at the bottom of the real body is the green green portion. Close is the top of the green body up top. The high is the candle wick up top for how high that the, the, the price went in that time frame that you're looking at. And the candlestick or the sorry, the wick on the bottom is the low that it went in that time frame that you're looking at. So open and close, high and low, pretty easy. Next one, just gonna be the exact opposite. It's gonna be red. Here's your bearish candle, right? So you have your opens on top, your closes on bottom, high and low are still the same. So really, really, really basic. Like I said, I wasn't trying to get into a lot of uh, hard things today. Uh, the next thing we're gonna look into is the names so I wish I could have made this a little bit cleaner but so this is just one candle right so they're looking at the hammer which is in the middle inverted hammer dragonfly doji a bullish spinning top so then you have the exact opposites for the bearish side of the hammer of, of the candles as well so you have a hanging man which is opposite of the hammer shooting star which is opposite of inverted hammer Gravestone Doji, which is the opposite of Dragonfly. Bearish Spinning Top, which is the opposite of Bullish Spinning Top. So, <clears throat> if you can look at the hammer, the, the wick on the hammer is at least two times the body. So, if you were to put this body down below and make it, you know, times it by two, the wick would be longer than the body. Right. Same with this inverted hammer. I believe it's supposed to be three times as many times as, as the body on the wick. Okay. A dragonfly jo doji basically means it opened and closed at the same price, but there was a, um, a very long uh, wick uh, on the sell side. Okay. A bullish spinning top basically just says that it opened and closed a little higher, but the price moved way up high and way down low, and so it looks like a spinning top. Um, so it's kind of like an indecision. Um, exact opposite for the bearish side, you know. <clears throat> Hanging man, this wick is double the length of the of this. So, pretty easy stuff. I don't expect people to memorize these. Like, I don't memorize these names. I just look at the pattern and go, okay, this, I know what that, I know that's either bearish or, or uh, bullish, right? So then we can go over here to the two candlestick patterns. Bullish kicker. So this obviously uh, opened here, closed here, opened up here. So it's basically like almost a gap up like we would see. Um, bullish engulfing. So the the any time that you have a candle that is bigger than the candle before it, it's an engulfing candle. So uh, the next one is a bullish harami. So it, it doesn't 
It doesn't cover the whole body. See how the red body is much bigger than the green body? But <clears throat> that's basically... Uh, so this is pretty basic stuff. Prince, piercing line means that basically it got all the way down to here, pushed back up to at least halfway of the red candle, or just a little bit above halfway of the red candle body. Right? So these are just these are just basic basic patterns, real easy. All I want you guys to do is just to look at them and see, okay, what's what's easy to understand? Like bearish engulfing, bullish engulfing. These are really easy to understand, and when you see them, you can say, okay, well, in that short term, it's either bearish or bullish, correct? So here's another part of the um, basic, just real body open and close, close and open, right? Uh, these are all neutral symbols, so these are all like basically dojis. Um, most of the time a doji is just indecisive for the most part. Um, buyers and sellers can't decide which way the stock's supposed to go. Obviously, once you start getting these long candle wicks in a certain direction, it's, it's, sometimes it can tell you if it's more bullish or bearish, but it's not, it's not the easiest way to, under, like, to follow for sure perfect. So these are three three plus candle patterns. So you have Morning Star where you know this is going this is descending, and the next candle opens up at where the bottom red candle uh, opened at. So it's almost like a gap up, and then it just kept continuing on into the first red candle. Um, Morning Star Doji. So you have a big red candle. An indecisive candle, which can be a sign of reversal, and then you have the reversal of the green bar uh, moving upwards. Um, so I really know I don't ever see a bullish abandoned baby very often. Um, just um, you do see three white soldiers on occasion, so it's just three green bars in a row. Um, so this is kind of the same thing, three line strike. So you can see that it just keeps pushing lower and lower. Eventually it hits a doji and then it pushes above this this uh, this green candle, this bullish green candle covers all three of those. So it's kind of like, in my mind, it would kind of look like a like one of these, right? It basically turns into a bullish engulfing if you were to do the math. This bar is bigger than these bars. So it's kind of like a bullish engulfing basically. Just to try to keep things simple. Because that's what you're trying to do when you're reading charts. You want to keep it as simple and as fast to under to comprehend when you're looking to buy into a stock or getting out of a stock. So that's what I try to do. I try to make it easier on myself. Like when I'm looking at this, I just go, yeah, that's an engulfing candle. It basically just ate up all three of those. No big deal. Move on. Um, which other ones do I see pretty often? I don't want to go over all these ones because you don't see all of them very often. Um, so here's evening doji star. Th this can happen. So this is like going up on a run up and with the bullish sentiment. You hit an indecisive doji candle, and then you have a reversal that starts off. Now, this doesn't tell you if it's going to complete, com completely turn around and go backwards, but you can just see that it's weakness. Um... So three black crows, exact opposite of three white soldiers. Three line sprite strike. So it's the same thing, only this is a bearish one. Basically, like I said, this is a bearish engulfing candle. Bearish engulfing candle takes over the green candle. This one just has three green candles that you would just add together and say, okay, the red candle is bigger than those three green candles, right? Um... So there's that's the that, those are your patterns right there, and that's basically all I really wanted to talk about for the class itself. I kind of wanted to make it simple and easy because um, I've had a lot of people asking me about patterns and charts and everything, and I don't know the community well enough to know where we're all at with our understanding of these. Um, so I figured I was going to start out simple and work my way to more complex. So. Um, 
so that's that's kind of where I'm there. I want to kind of want to open up for questions. Um, see what where you guys want to go from here. So you're trying to ask, like, am I still able to use my technical analysis on stocks that are very volatile? Is that kind of what you're kind of asking? Okay, so yes, 100%. Let me go uh, into Weeble here. So yes, you can still track. So let me get into uh, AMC. Make sure you guys are looking at what I'm looking at. So on Weeble, uh, let's see, all my indicators are gone. MA, BWAP, MACD, RSI, EMA. So, drawings. Oh, crap. I can fix that real quick. Sorry, everybody. Boop. So, there you go. Thank you. I thought I did that earlier. Thank God that wasn't my big account, huh? Yeah. Oh, my positions. I don't care about my positions. There's only 106. Uh, this is not my. This is not my main um, account. I use Moomoo for my main account, so you guys can see my 106 shares at nine dollars and twenty eight cents. That looks pretty like I did okay anyway. So, um, so yeah, tracking, tracking this uh, the stock right. So before. We could track it pretty well when we were down here. You know, we have all of these support and resistance lines in here. Um, but this is like before we started ramping up, right? Ken is talking about, is there a way to still track this nonsense up here? And for the most part, on each given day, yeah, you can still track the chart. Um, let's see, what am I on now? 30 minutes. So if I go, uh, let's see, where today was it that I was kind of tracking dead on? So on um, this day here, 6-3, I had drawn a trend line. It's gone, obviously, now because I deleted it because it looks funky. I had drawn a trend line somewhere in here, and it followed this trend all the way up. And then eventually, obviously, we came back down. But I could, I could track the stock and say, okay, it's trending very well. If we go down into, like, the one minute, where I can, uh, it's going to be, I don't want to do one minute. Let's do five minute. I don't want to have to go back and find it. So July, uh, June 3rd. So, I mean, if you honestly drew a trend line from, so if, when you're drawing a trend line, if you're going to use the body, you got to stay on the bodies. If you're going to use the wick, you can stay on the wicks, right? So, you know, this looks a lot worse than it did before. But <clears throat> so if you just were to follow the trend, my computer is like freezing. Wow. So, you know, just because it falls below a trend doesn't mean that it's dead, right? So, I think it was all the way up to like right here is where I was kind of tracking it. I was on the one minute, so this looks kind of funky, but so this could be a trend line right through here. You know, you have one point, two points, three points, four points, five points. Just because it breaks your trend line for a little while doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to come back and continue on. So here, here it did exactly that. Um, I wish I wouldn't have deleted the one minute, but uh, trend line. But <clears throat> yeah, you can still track them. You know, um, if you want to look at another one over here, you could track off this one here. You know, you can still go okay, well, and then you can start looking for a reversal, and this is actually perfect. So. Here we are on a descending level, right? We need to try and break the descending level. So what do we get in after hours right here? We just went over this. It's like amazing how perfectly this worked out for me. You have three, you basically have three white soldiers in a row right there, right? If you guys remember from what we just looked at. So then this would be a place where you could buy in. If you thought the stock was going to go higher than 45, right? So the overall sentiment of the stock itself. So, 
yes, you still can track them. It's still there. Like I said, if, as long as you know what what bearish looks like and bullish looks like based on trends, you can still use that uh, uh, for your ability here. You don't have to just buy in to be buying in, which that's okay as well. Um, but if you're trying to get into a decent into a decent price average, yeah, you could still use this. You know, in here, I don't see anything that says we're going to have a reversal until we get to these four green bars. So if if I was looking to buy into the stock. I would have gone, okay, it dropped below this candle. I don't have really any uh, res uh, support and resistance in here. But it started pushing back up. So I would have started buying some 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 uh, shares, you know, probably right in this area right here between these two candles. And then as it kept going up, albeit it wouldn't have worked out perfectly with this with this scenario, but as it was going to break the top of this red candle right here, I would have started buying some more shares, um, just because that's a bullish bullish behavior. If you're gonna, that's basically like a green engulfing candle, right? So that's the way that I look at these these charts still, based on just a daily, um, off daily, and then I'll, of course you go out to like a one hour. Uh, one hour might be too much. <clears throat> You know, you can still, if you wanted to do like a wedge, uh, let's use a ray. Uh, so you could probably turn this into a wedge. <clears throat> this run up right here. Another ray. You know, you could turn this into a wedge formation basically like that which then you're trying to make sure you don't fall out of the bottom of the wedge. You want to break out the top of the wedge. Um, which we did well in after hours uh, Friday. So we'd be looking to break above this uh, descending line, right? So you've got one touch point, two touch points, three touch points, which that's going to, that confirms your trend. Um, down here you have one, two, three touches, which confirms the trend. And you want to try and break out of that trend. Um, so you can either start buying off of this line, which I don't consider a very strong trend because it's only three points. The more times a, uh, points touch a trend line, the, the more support or resistance it has. So if this had, would have touched like 20 times and be like, okay, it's probably going to bounce off of this again. Um, you could start buying off of this trend line. You could buy off the trend line on your way back up. And then as you're going to approach breaking out the, this top I'm going to make it green so we can see it better. So if we're trying to break through this green, as you're buying through, the, you could buy after you break through this green. But you always have to make sure, like right now we're looking at a one-hour chart. So you'd want one bar to go above this and hold above that for one hour to confirm that it broke out of this downward trend. Um, I, like to, I, like to, I like to buy it as I'm going through um, just because I'm a very risky trader. So you, you can trade on your own way that you would like to, for sure. Um, is that enough for that question, or do we want to keep going? You're welcome. Can I, anybody else have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, I don't, I, I did not hear about that. I'm i uh, I'm currently back at work, so I'm working 48 hours a week. So I do not get to track all of the, um, all the stuff going on on Twitter and I don't get to track BAM, but if he was talking about something on Friday, uh, and I don't know anything about his modeling system, um, at all. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I, yeah, I'm here. I'm here almost every night, um, right around 10 o'clock Eastern. So if you ever want to just hop in, you can just at me and, and I'll be glad to come in and hang out and, and uh, answer questions as well. So 
don't feel like this is a one in a like one time chance. You know, I, I'm, I come in here and hang out. So, um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay so here's my question back to you guys do you guys i actually pulled some extra content it's from rainer tail it's um it's actually going deeper in um into like flag flag pattern tragedy tragedy uh-huh i can't even say the words right now let's just say that it gets more involved um i can just play the videos i mean this is who i I'm actually just going to pull it up so you guys can see, because this is who I learned from. I really like this guy. Um, let's see, where is it going? Here you go. So this is the guy that I, did I do this one right? Yeah, you can't see my account there. See, I did it on one of them. Um, so let me back up a page. So this guy's name is Rainer Teo. I really like him a lot. Um, he goes through everything. So this is where I go to, to learn. Um, you can go into these playlists. Um, you have candlestick pattern trading course for, for beginners, basically almost exactly what I just went through. Um, and then he goes into, you look at this one, useful chart patterns, uh, useful trading indicators. You know, he's got all of this stuff and it, there's, there's hours and hours and hours of content in here. Um, so if you guys are inter, 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 uh, interested in watching just him, we can do that. Or I wanted to make this class very basic, very easy, so I could get an understanding of where the community kind of sits at with their knowledge. Um, you know, because at one point I didn't know what, what the green and red bars meant. <laughs> so I had to go look it up myself. Uh, but I just wanted to start off easy and, and go from where people kind of give me feedback as well. Right. So. That's the way I want to teach my classes. I don't want to move too fast to miss anybody. Um, but I also don't want to go too slow that the community is like, well, this is boring. I already know this stuff, right? So this is this is what your role in the community is, is to help us understand where you're at with your training. So that way we can give you the correct, uh, you know, um, knowledge as we keep moving forward. But that's, I just want, nope, go ahead. The nine, the nine and 50, the uh, moving average. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's all, it's all relative to um, how you want to trade. Um, you know, I use, I, I have the same setup as Trey. I use the VWAP, I use the 15-day MA, and I use the 200 EMA. Um, that's just what I like to use, but it is definitely user-friendly. You can use it however you would like. Um, obviously, the longer you have, uh, th th the more information there is on that line, right? So uh, it's just it's just a basically off what how you feel and what you like to use. Um, I don't think there's a right or a wrong. Oh, you're talking about time frame itself? I, I'm sorry, I, I I got the question. Thought, I thought the question in my head was yeah. So I what I typically do is depending on what what I'm doing that day. I'm a trend trader. I, I don't um, I don't usually buy and hold stocks for too long a period of time. Um, but what I do like to do is no matter what, I always start out. Uh, you can start out in the daily or the one hour just to see the trend of the stock. Like this is about like, okay, what's the trend here? Like if we go back into the weekly, like, okay, this doesn't look, this looks like it's been descending, kind of had a push, back, went back down, go into the daily. Okay, it still has this major descending line, but it's pushed through like the, so what I would do here is just go, okay, this is, 
Why didn't it draw? God, I hate this auto button. Somebody call Weeble and tell him to get rid of the auto button. Um, you know, so it broke this descending line. So this is just, you know, obviously something you can see right away. It broke this descending line, it pushed it up, pushed back down. And, you know, I would say that this is still on a descending line. Uh, so you can do this real quick. So then you could go from here, you could go down into your one hour. Like, let's say I was actually wanting to really trade this and go, okay, it's trading, it traded below its VWAP, it's trading underneath its, uh, under its 15 day, it's trading above its 200 EMA. So, <clears throat> is, that, is that really its EMA? Freaking $2? Uh, oh, this, this just had a stock split. That's why. That's why I'm like, wait a minute. So, from there, I could go based off of, uh this is this is ctrm so so yeah i just grabbed one didn't realize it was one that was been split before so that was not the best choice well see there you go um there's a quite a few people quite a bit of people holding this stock um you know matt coors says this quite often about this sector the maritime shipping it's just it's just a hard sector to trade in um, so there's that as well. You can take that with the grain of salt, obviously. Um, but yeah, so now we drop down into the one hour. And so we, you know, it basically has a double top off of the, t off of this descending line. It's tried to break it twice and it's gotten rejected twice. So on the third push, I would have bet that this is probably going to push through this descending line on the third push, which could be tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> But eventually, you know, you can come in here and you can kind of look at support. I would say support line. Like right in there would be a decent support line. So you can come in here and grab your support line. Horizontal line. I would say that this probably seems like it, it bounced off of that three times that day. Bounced off of it there. It's kind of been used as a support and resistance a lots of times, which is a, a good way to eat tell if it's going to be a strong support or not so then you can start trading off of this and then this is kind of work like where you wait like where you make your decision right so let's say tomorrow let's say uh tomorrow it bounces off this this support line and starts its way up so then this is where you kind of like have to make your decision um okay am i gonna like swing day the swing trade this or day trade this depending on what the strength is going into the end of the day so if it were to bounce off this again and kind of push off in the morning, you could turn this into a swing trade. You know, if you don't have $25,000 in your account or, you know, you only have so many day trades left, you could actually probably swing this into the next day based on what happens before lunchtime. So that's, that's, just, that's just a way that I use it. And then you can keep kind of confirming yourself as you go down into the hours, into the minute one minute chart. So this is like, this is how I would look into buy, buying in to a stock i'd start out very high like the dailies work my way down in start seeing um, trends as much as possible and just keep working my way down make sure i'm not missing anything you know i'd probably go check and see what news was here because this is nasty you know did this is this shorted like this doesn't look normal to me um so is there some really bad news that came out uh, news Oh, I saw that. I saw that, which they've like, they went from like six to like 26 uh, ships, right? Or something. So yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. But to me, that sounds like it's a kind of a bullish thing, not a bearish thing. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously here was very, very bullish so it's like you had a great news day and a bad news day right back to back, back to back so it just seems kind of funky that that's what's going on but um regardless you know so the the other thing you have to remember is a news catalyst will always out trump technical analysis always so if some kind of a news thing comes out 
it'll break any trend line that you draw that you think is so strong that it's not going to break, right? The news is definitely make it more important is more important than technical analysis. But oh, go ahead. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's a great way to hedge your position to just keep uh, – Right. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's so yeah, that's how you would do. Uh, so I use all of them. Uh, I mean, like I get when I get down into I, I day trade and d uh, trend trade mostly. Um, so then I just kind of just start checking to see where I want to start buying in. It bounced off of this line that I just made. Um, you know, it's bounced off th just this one day. One, two, three. You can, might want to lower it just a skosh maybe. It's bounced off the line, you know, four times, five times, six times, something like that. So you could use that as support based on the one day. You could also scroll out and you could go back over here, see how many times it's bounced off just to reconfirm. It was a major resistance line for a long time. You know, this it resisted all after hours there. Uh, it just likes to bounce back and forth of it. See, it got, it got, it got, it got, it got stopped there as well. Um, and then tried to use it as support, but it didn't. It broke up higher and then came back right below that support line again. Tried to bounce off, bounce back up, and tried to bounce through it again. So, I mean, it should be a pretty pretty solid support line. You know, resistance lines turn into support lines. So you have to remember that as well. So if I was going to look into buying this, I'd be looking for tomorrow's morning's action to bounce off this line or a continuation of uh, ascending, ascending level of a support going through. Um, which you could turn this into a day trade pretty easily or uh, into a into a swing trade. So when, when I say swing trade, that means go into the next day, right? Um, that's all it means. So you could swing it for as many days as you wanted to, um, or you could just day trade it. You could watch um, watch it bounce off, see some strength coming in. You could see it dying off, and you could just sell it on the way down um, if you wanted to day trade. Um, but obviously, just because it comes down doesn't mean it's not going to go back up. So you just have to keep your eye on, uh, the trends basically would start making your own support level lines and levels as well as the day goes on. So that's how I get in and out of the stock to see. Um, so I hop around between all of the uh, time frames. Does anybody else have another question? Did that answer your question? Is that good? I don't know. Yeah, no, no problem, man. I'm here for you guys, so you just let me know what you need. Yeah, man. Right, and that's and that's all I'm. I, I mean, like I said, I, I, don't, I wasn't sure if we were going to get into trends tonight or not, um, but I wanted to offer the, uh, that out there to everybody, you know. Um, and then you can obviously get into flag patterns and pendants and all sorts of other stuff as well, which we will get into eventually. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard for me to make a lot of content right now. I'm working 48 hours a week, plus having my two kids um, and my family. So I, I'm trying to – I just try to make something – because keep, people kept asking me to, I need to do a class. So uh, try, I try to listen to the people in the group and the community and go off of what they, what they need and what they want. So um, like I said, you guys are more important than the staff is. We make a, we make, we made the, we're here. We were part of the bull house, but 
the community is what makes the bull house what it's going to be in the future. We need everybody to get, uh, start learning now so we can get everybody on the same page. Right, and that's and that's fine. Uh, you know, everybody can trade their their own way, but it's good to see what other people are doing. Um, and and the more the more knowledge you gain, the better off you'll be on your own on your own strategy, right? And that's that's all I'm here to do. I'm not trying to change your strategy. I'm just trying to give you knowledge on what I see, what I do, right? And then I learn from other people as well. I learn from Trey. I learn from Rainer. Um, and it's just, uh, you're just always evolving, trying to learn more, try to keep making better wins than losses. And that's the overall goal, is to make money, not lose money. Right? Right? Am I really? Okay. Well, if it ever gets too bad, just just let me know, and I'll I can try to do something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I, I uh, yeah, I mean, this is like, a, like I said, this is just us. What we need to do is every, you know, whenever we do these, we want to bounce ideas off of you guys. You guys bounce ideas off of me. We bounce, you know, that's like, that's how we all learn. And this is a safe place. This is a place where you guys can bring up any issues that are coming up or that you are concerned with. Like we don't shun people because they have a, a point of view. You know, obviously if somebody comes in here and just starts cussing and and screaming, yeah, we're going to get rid of them. But for the most part, we try to listen, you know, like, okay, well, what's your DD behind it? Like, where you, where did you get this information? Like, and then we can have like a real conversation. Like, this isn't a place where it's like, oh, you don't have green eyes. We're going to kick you out, right? Like, that's not what this place is. Um, this place is a safe place. So I want anybody have any questions. It doesn't even have to be about charts. We can talk about anything. Sounds like nobody's got any other questions or anything. I see that, yeah. Oh, pings. Yeah, I wish we could get rid of the freaking pings. I agree. Okay, I'll, I'll find it later, but... Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, I see it now. I'm moving through screens pretty quickly here. So as a group, do you guys want to look, maybe watch one of these Rainer Teo videos? Um, you know, this is, this is me asking you guys what you want to see, what you guys want to do. Oh. Yeah, sounds good. So I will post the link. Um, for the for Rainer Teo, for sure. Um, and like I said the, the, earlier, you know, if you guys have a question, you guys can always at me and I'll get the notification and I'll try and come in and help. Um, and I think my next class will be more on trends um, just because that's where, that's where you get the knowledge where you can buy in or, uh, into a stock you think at a pretty decent price and think that it's gonna go up. Um, and that, that's a pretty big deal, right? So um, hopefully I can make that class throughout the week. Hopefully, I mean, I don't sleep much. So 
Maybe I can make a class on trends um, and have another class next week on Sunday um, at the same time. So um, it's just really hard, you know, working 48 hours a week and then having family as well. Uh, but that's 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 what I have to say for that. Um, okay, well, I'm going to stop recording. I'm sorry. I lost you. Trends of the charts that I look at. Okay. Right. Like, right. Okay. So, like, let's say we were looking at, well, I'll start here. So this is what, like in the mornings, this is where I normally start out my day. I start out in the markets, just to give myself an idea of like what the NASDAQ, Dow, and S&P 500 are doing. And then from there, I'll go into here. I'll look into for like, I'll look in tops. Really? Syntonics went up 41%. Um, so then I'll start looking for like, uh, a decent, you know, 41%, that's chasing, you know, you don't want to be doing that. Um, lately, stocks have been just freaking a lot of craziness. Look at top losers, you can kind of look in here, and you can go, well, U.S. Well Services, I've been seeing them a lot lately. So, from here, Yes, yeah, SINS was up like 41%, which is good for my mom. She's bought, she, she's got Sensonics. Um, it's a great company. There's a lot going on there. I uh, don't want to get into too much talking about the company itself. Um, but I've seen U.S. Well Services on top gainers and top losers a bunch. So that means it's pretty volatile, which is something that you're looking for if you're like me, day trading, swing trading. Um, so then I would start out here daily. So it looks like it's starting to have like a bit of an uptrend right here towards the end of this. So you might be forming some sort of a wedge, but, but I don't stay on this for very long. I just get this overall sentiment of the stock. Okay. I had a big, huge run up, went back down. It looks like it's kind of pushing off. And then all of a sudden it has this big red day. But then I'll still go in here and just start looking at, obviously go look at news to see what's going on with news. So it looks like it had a really nice ascending level of, let's start down here somewhere in this run, you know, something like that. You could even put uh, Ray like down in here in like one of these. You can put that as a trend line instead, maybe, just because it has more touch points and it bounces it off a lot more times. So it had a nice level of of ascending level right there. <clears throat> then it had a huge push up, so something probably either something newsworthy happened or whatever pushed up, and then you know it's hard to read these kind of stocks when they push up, and then two days later they push back down. Uh, you know, it kind of makes it, it's, so then you have to go into the news and check it out. Smart sand grids, higher off court win against U.S. well services. So, yeah, see, there's a lot of court stuff going on. So that kind of explains what's going on there. Um, but this is, like I said, this is usually where I start my day. I usually, I usually go into top winners, top losers. If I don't see anything in there that I know, um, I just move myself down the line. I'll go into active uh, and see... You know, what's active for the day? Volume brings in volatility, right? So we could go into Apple. We can look into, usually Apple's not this volatile, but. So then, like I say, we pop back out to the dailies. Just want to check and see overall trend, right? So for sure, look, you know, very, very ascending level. And then. From there, you just want to start breaking it back down into like the one hour. Look for any kind of trends here. It's very up and down, right? So 
this is like a day trader's like <laughs> if you can keep the catching these bottoms you're doing awesome as a day trader just buy here sell here so this you know probably like two weeks ago this was like perfect for day trading but now looking at it from here we have like oh god this stupid I hate that I have to like fight this thing so we broke out of the descending level here right and then we have a really nice strong ascending level as we scroll in here so what I would be looking for with Apple uh, yeah I don't like any of those trends So let's go down farther. 30 minute, five minute, going to here. Okay, I like this a lot better. Grab this array here off of this run up. That looks like a pretty decent. I mean, obviously, after hours, it broke through it, but it's because it's just dead. Like, Apple's not very volatile after hours. But you can see this stock moving up in the, more, you know, in pre-market. So I'd be just looking to see the action in the morning to see if it's going to continue on a nice ascending level of support or if it's going to end up, you know, dropping down. Um, is there any stocks that anybody wants to look at that they're looking into buying into? Like maybe after QS, QuantumScape? Okay, so let's, uh, so let's say, let's go back into the dailies. This just opened up not like sometime last year, right? So IPO last year at some point. September <clears throat> so we definitely have a level a descending level yeah, basically broke all the descending levels which that's a good sign um, overall I don't see like a really great support line Okay, so let's start just clicking. Like, if it doesn't make sense, like, just go down to the next next time frame. Like, if you if you, you don't see anything right away, just start moving around. So this is one hour. Yeah, it's been kind of trading, kind of been trading between like 23 and 32 for a long time, huh? Mm. So high, yeah, I see 23.76 here on uh, 5.26. So that's I mean, like that's a long time ago, obviously, right? <laughs> for for me anyway, it's a long time. Um, so we have a low of 23.76 and a high of 30.81. So we could definitely draw in if Weeble didn't suck. Oh, I know why my problem is. I need to move these. How do I make those go away? Thought there was a way to make those. Oh, here it is. Boop. That's better. So, put this up here at like 3081. That's close enough. We could probably make like a wedge formation out of this. Oh, stupid weeble, man. Make a wedge formation out of this. So we go there, put another one down here at this 2036. I would say I really I think this is probably the best trend line I can see right there. So then now we're looking through now we're looking at a wedge formation, right? So same thing, usually when I draw wedges. Uh, my bottom line, I usually make red. 
top line I usually make green. I try to make things as simple as possible, right? So if it breaks down below red, that means it could go down farther. If it, blows, if it breaks above green, that means it could push up higher. So I just do simple things like that just to keep things as simple as possible in my head, right? It looks like it likes to bounce off the 200 EMA pretty decently as well. Um, and right now, it's not a great, I mean, look at, look at this, look at this, just going straight up almost. I mean, from 2330, 2376, pushed up to like 27, so $4 gain. And then you just want to watch, I mean, that's not the greatest example, but higher lows, higher highs, right? So you have higher low, maybe a higher low, but higher highs, higher highs, higher low. So you can see that the trend is upwards from here. Higher lows, higher lows, obviously much higher highs. So it looks like, like I said, it likes to bounce off this 200 EMA. Yeah, and like I said, the, their news catalyst will always, will always outdo your technical analysis. But this gives you a good idea of kind of like what's going on up until a news catalyst hits, right? So if you know if you know a news catalyst is coming and you're already in the stock, you're like, okay, I'm just going to hold on to it or whatever. Um, but yeah, the QuantumScape looks like it's doing very well. Um, the last uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, last seven trading days, it's been uh, been moved, it's it's moved up rather nicely here. Um, it's kind of volatile, but as a day trader, swing trader, that uh, that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, you could have bought these, the, you could have bought into these lows. You know, off this 23.76. When was the last time it hit 23.76? A long time ago, right? So if you if you've been tracking this stock, you could have bought into 20.36, 23.76, and you'd have been golden, man. Right, right. Yeah, because this was trading, I mean, obviously, this was trading much higher, 132, <laughs> you know, uh, not too long ago. It was this, like, yeah, end of the year, beginning of the new year, so. Um, uh oh, oh, yeah, so that's a big deal. So then... Right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to know, right? Um, I mean, the only way you could know what's what's going to happen is if you knew what every position everybody had uh, long that was shorting the stocks that we think that they're going to make you know these massive moves, and and then you could play off of that. That way you would know. But that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I know somebody that's in that kind of the work, but I don't. Know. She's been kind of busy lately. Um, but yeah, I mean, just based off looking at the chart, you know, you can see this bouncing off of this, uh, this ascending level right here again. It's been doing really well with higher lows, higher highs. That's, I mean, that's what you're looking for. Um, anybody else have any stocks or any other questions we want to get into? Okay. Boom. These guys do a lot of government contracts, right? Okay, so, well, let me do what I tell everybody else to do. So it definitely broke the descending level back up on an uptrend I mean this is a just right off the bat off the daily you got a nice
I mean, that right there is amazing. <clears throat> yeah. So then we go down into the one hour and kind of take a closer look at it. I mean, that is freaking, that's about as good as it gets right there. Uh, yeah, I would call that a pretty decent support line. So it broke through the support line a little bit, but then it got right back up on it. I mean, these are, those are, that's a pretty decent move. Uh, wow. I don't know how long it can sustain this bouncing off of this. I mean, you can tell that it's kind of running out of gas, right? Because it's down here. You're way off this trend line, right? You're pushing way above this thing. And then you're kind of just kind of teetering out, kind of starting to bounce almost off that trend line. And then it kind of just starts really coming back down and bouncing off it, which is, you know, it's just getting exhausted, which happens. So you could see, you know, this is probably a good place to see if it's going to break down below um, and then look for another support um, up here somewhere. Because this thing's been just running for the most part. Um, so like for a support, that's what I'd start looking at if I was in this stock is, okay, where, one, where do I get out? Or one, where do I buy more in if I want more, right? Um, so I would say right here, Somewhere, I hate using after hours, but it touches there a few times. I think that one's even stronger though. That's probably the best support line I can see out of the last couple of trading days. Um, I'd look for it to bounce off this line or, or the 200 EMA that's obviously coming up. Um, that looks like a pretty decent support line. And um, I think that's my favorite one out of all of these. I mean, this could be a somewhat of a support line. It's not going to be as strong because it doesn't touch as many times. And I don't like really using after hours as much. But you could have a support line there as well. Like right in here somewhere. And you got to remember, these lines aren't perfect, right? It's like, it's okay if they dip down below them a little bit, but once they once they break down below them for a certain period of time, then it's time to give up, right? And, and get out of your position. Um, or if you think it's going to... Oh, go ahead. Right. Right, so we, uh, let's see, what else can I look at real quick? It also has somewhat of, let's see, that's after hours. So it's kind of got like this, this, this right here is 2450 basically. It looks like it's acting as a resistance line pretty strongly here. It's been rejected. What did I say? 2450. So we'll go look at 2450. 2450 ish. That'll work nut. So it's it's tried to break this 2450. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I'm just kind of from there. I'm just kind of just going with whatever. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just kind of just threw it in there, but. If you're going to use dojis, then use dojis. If you're not going to use the, if you're going to use the real body, then use the real body. Um, I mean, the ob it's it's a uh, like twelve cents difference from the bodies to the wicks. But um, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's it's not. I'm not saying that it's not going to break this. I mean. Then you can also actually look like, so if you put in this um, resistance line, we'll put this as green because if it breaks it, it's going to go higher, right? Like usually. So then you basically like made a wedge out of your support line, out of your resistance line and your ascending level line. So then you'd want to see maybe keep, keep fighting up to this line and break through it. 
I mean, based on based on the whoops, what did I just do? Put that back. So based on the trend, though, I mean, the trend is very very strong upwards. Um, so so I would expect it to either maybe back off a little bit and come back down to this 23 and bounce off of it or somewhere in here. I mean, you can also use the, see, now we're getting into like, now we're getting into like a lot of, you could come in here and you could go from the run up, like, let's see, which, which, where would I want to use the run up from? So you could use the Fibonacci retracement as well to help you figure out like, well, I don't know if there's a great support line here. But this is getting in like to the technical stuff, right? So we could go into Fibonacci retracement and we could go from here up to here. Oops. So this is getting into like very different times, right? So <clears throat> Fibonacci tells you, oh crap, I keep, there's, I'm getting too many lines on here. <laughs> um, Let's make it a different color because I am colorblind and I cannot see any of that. That's a little better. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so you could look at this 2286 as a 23.6%, which is be which would be super bearish. I mean, not bearish, super bullish if it bounced off this 2286 after this nice huge run up. You can see it bounced off that 2386 uh, mark as well. So uh, let's delete that. So you can use Fibonacci as well. But like I said, man, we're getting into. I started off with candlesticks and bodies and and, and wicks. And now we're going into Fibonacci retracements. <laughs> so see, that's like that's the whole thing about this class is it can go into anything that we need to go into, but I don't want to go too fast too soon, right? So that's just how I feel about that. Um, I, right. Yeah. And I mean, that's all I'm trying to do with this. I knew that we would probably get into trends a little bit um, tonight, and that's kind of what I wanted to get into. Um, but I wanted to start out basic because I, I don't want anybody to think that like you can't come in here this room and learn and learn the basics. Like I want to start out very, very simple and work my way up. Um, that way everybody's kind of on the same track um, and we're not going to lose anybody. But I don't want to lose anybody. I want everybody that's in here. I think we've got like 900 people now, 935. I want everybody that comes in here to feel comfortable asking questions doesn't matter which question it is. I want everybody to understand that we're here to teach you guys from wherever you're at. If you're very, if you, if it's your first day, then we will help you through. Like that's what we do. Um, so I take pride in all the, all the staff here. Um, I haven't been a staff member for, I haven't been with these guys for very long, but I love all of them. Um, cause they, they're like me, they care. They want to help everybody. Um, and, and we're not doing this for money. Like that's, we don't want your money. We want you to, we want you to get into the market, make money, and and be happy. Like that's the whole point of this group. So, um, with that, I'll kind of go. Does anybody else want to say anything? No problem, buddy. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording at this point.